Hey everyone, it is the Angry Honey Badger here, and it is time to take a look at a Lee Sin build. Gonna be playing him actually in top lane today. He is a good jungler as well, so if you want to play him there, that is just another place to do it. But I think top Lee Sin is actually a, f uh, a blast. This game is uh, live recorded. There's actually gonna be a couple games, because this first game turns into a massacre. But we're gonna talk a lot of stuff about Lee Sin today, and uh, handfuls of things, really. But first off, I got Darius top, and he just annoys me. And uh, we're going to have Xin Zhao come in here for a gank. Going to get into a little bit of a brawl to start it off. Then he's going to come in. He is going to flash, but he gets stuck in min minions. We are going to keep moving in, and we are going to go ahead and pick up this first blood kill at the Ignite, and the poke's going to do it. And Zhao's going to get away with about 10 health. So, um, But that works. That's going to be a good first blood for me, and it's going to give him gold too. So um, try to coordinate that stuff with your junglers if you can, if you uh, need help in your lane. Uh, I don't like uh, Darius because I think he's just annoying with his bleed. So... Uh, it's nice to pick up a first blood at level one I like to play him offensively and um, because of some of the damage that he can contribute so I actually started with a Doran's blade if you want to start out with a completely different item go for it um, I do Doran's blade because the sustain is pretty good with it along with a few other things so um, that's just what I like to do obviously when I went back to base I need to start building um, other things to stay safe picked up uh, health pots got that ward got a little bit of armor and my boots but unfortunately I'm gonna get bleed and ignited and I'm not gonna make it out through that so I actually am gonna die to him really fast so um, kind of unfortunate I also did take a lot of minion aggro too so um, I am gonna die to him there just kind of played a little sloppy but uh, maybe you'll get to see that if this if this game becomes a Skype game as well it might so um that will be linked in the description, by the way, if it is there. And we will continue to talk about Lee Sin. So let's go over his abilities and how those work. This is probably the most complicated side of Lee Sin. And I think this is the things that make uh, people get confused about Lee Sin as a champion. Because his abilities do multiple things in different ways. First off, there is his passive. After Lee Sin uses, uses an ability... Um, his next two basic attacks within three seconds gain 40% attack speed and return 15 energy. So you just have to keep that in mind. Basically, all of your abilities besides your ultimate have a second activation to them. If you use your Q ability, which is your Sonic Waves slash Resonating Strike, basically you throw out your Q, you see that little orb go out. If it hits a target then and it doesn't die like a minion or a champion, then you can hit Q again and you will go to their location. That's your Q and that does physical damage. Next is your W. W ability, which is your safeguard and your iron will, and that is your shield, but you can also lock onto targets on your team for them. So here I'm going to move in on a Kali in mid, hit her, and then I'm going to actually safeguard over to a minion, pick up shield, and get out of tower range so I don't die. Um, I also decided to go mid there, because if you can't tell in top lane, having just a little bit of a tough time getting zoned a tiny bit by Darius, and if that does happen, don't forget you can go to other lanes to pick up kills and experience and gold. So um, I'm going to help kill their mid. Um, while he pushes because he wasn't going to let me really farm. So I'll come back top now and I'll start farming again. But you can always go gank other lanes if you need to. So that's just another thing to remember. Also, you can always take golems on top if you're there too. So uh, just something something to remember if you're on this side. Um, so we did that and that is your uh, safeguard. That's your shield. You can, do that to, you can do that over to minions. You can do that to wards. You can use it to get over to champions on your team and you're going to get that shield. When you reactivate that... Um, you then life steal and spell vamp for a bit um, for five seconds? Yes, for five seconds. So you can reactivate that while you're in lane. Just put the shield on you and then reactivate it and you can just attack minions and get lots of life steal back from that. So uh, that's a good way to stay up in lane so just kind of remember that then there is your e ability which is your tempest and your cripple basically whenever you smash down using that you are going to hit targets around you dealing physical damage and then when you activate it again using cripple they are going to all become slowed so that is what that does and uh, that is your e ability and then your ultimate is your dragon's rage which is basically you kick them and it hurts like hell so uh here we actually found udir we're going to try to fight him a little bit akali's going to go over here and find us um we're going to move on her because we can really really hurt her if we want to i'm gonna kick her with my ultimate and then i'm gonna safeguard that shield over to zao to get out of that range and pick up that shield in case another turret shot was gonna come hit me i'm just gonna walk this way around while they take care of darius so um just make sure i stayed out of his way and that's just you know you just have to get used to lee sin's abilities they're mostly the biggest problems when people are trying to learn lee sin or say lee sin's hard it's just his abilities. You just got to play them a lot to get used to how they work and what combinations you can use them in, what order, when it's smart, when it is smart to use certain abilities, like when to actually use your Q to then go to the target location so you aren't just d tower diving people by accident. So um, 
just little things you have to learn. So you just got to really practice Lee Sin and his abilities. But we're going to see some of these and how they're going to work this game. Um, we already saw one where you got out of tower range a couple times. So um, we're just going to pay attention to how we can kind of be tricky with uh, Lee Sin, although I'm not super tricky with him. Now here we're going to move in. I also have Zhao up here as well. He is going to go for the tower. I'm going to kick him off of it, though, to get him away from it. Um, he is going to pick up that tower. I will pick up the kill, killing him. And then he's going to say worth in chat. But realistically, how is this worth it? Because now we're just going to push down his lane and get his tower. And then we're going to go steal their blue buff. So uh, definitely not worth it. Um, definitely just a free kill for us, really. And a trade on towers. But um, we've continued building. Um, as for my boots early on in the game, what I try to do with Lee Sin's boots, depending on their team composition and who I'm usually laning against, I will try to get boots that will help me against uh, their team. So either go with Ninja Tabby or Merc Treads. Comes down to personal preference. Here we're going to get into a fight against their jungler and their Darius. We have to focus Darius so he can't just keep dunking because he's going to do it anyway. So we're going to get rid of him first. We are going to lose Zhao. And then I am going to get in a 1v1 with Udyr, who I'm pretty sure I would have been able to kill um, quite easily anyways just because... It, it would have been close, but I probably would have got that. But Jax is going to show up, and we will kill him as well. So I'm um, currently on a rampage. But those next items that I did start building, we did pick up a little bit of magic resist because that will be teaming up with a longsword to become a hex streaker because it's a very helpful item while you are laning because of the shield that will proc if any magic damage hits you once you get below a certain amount of health. And then we did pick up a vampiric scepter, which will give us a little bit of damage, and we'll be building towards a next item as well and um, health pots if you need them, and wards for your lane as well. So we're just going to keep pushing down towers because right now we are grouping better and getting into better little little fights against this team. Here they are going to actually chase us a little bit. Jax is going to be slower than all of us for some reason, but he will stun them and jump back over to me again to get some distance. But then Akali is going to show up. They are going to stun him. I'm going to jump back in. So will our... Uh, our tree, Maokai, and I will pick up a kill on Akali. They will also uh, kill this um, Darius and Udyr, and then we will kill Misfortune as well. So um, we turned that around, and my ult had just came off of cooldown. So that's why we turned it to do that fight, and uh, that's just something that you can do if they're chasing, and um, you know you're not going to get away, especially once they got that close to the tower. If they're going to tower dive us, that was really going to be unfortunate for them. There we are picking up the Hex Drinker and then a Tiamat. That Tiamat will be teaming up with that Vampiric Scepter, and we uh, build a little bit more damage early on um, Lee Sin. At least I do if you're ahead. Now, one thing I will say, um, just in a general thing, um, the more I've seen this lately... A lot of people, when they fall behind, they keep trying to stick to just their normal, like, build. And that doesn't really work. You kind of need to start getting your defensive items uh, a little bit earlier than that. Because you're not going to be able to do your damage if you're behind in level and you don't live. So, uh, you need to start getting a little beefier. Because I've seen a few people in top lane getting, um, getting destroyed. And then they cannot, they, they can't do anything because they pick up Blade of the Rune King first. And they don't have any health or any magic uh, resist or anything or armor. And they, uh... You can't really do that. So if I'm behind with Lee Sin, I'm going to actually build the more defensive side of this build um, later on. But if you needed to get it early, then you would need to go ahead and pursue those items a little bit faster if you're not currently 6-1 and 6 like I am right now. Obviously, didn't farm quite that amazing this game because I've been all over the map, but that's okay because we've been pushing down towers because of it. There we are going to murder Akali because we wanted to. And now at this point, you would think, after you kill somebody like that, maybe the next person wouldn't show up to a 3v1. But Uder decides to, and I'm just going to run after him and just you know, run behind him for fun. And then now we are going to move in on him, but you would think he would have learned from Akali getting murdered that maybe he would too. But I'm going to go ahead and kill him, and we're going to keep pushing for a little bit. But um, like I was saying, if you need to get the defensive part of your build first, go ahead and do that. If uh, that's not going to work for you, then go ahead and get your offensive stuff. Just depends on what is happening. Now, one thing I will say about Lee Sin, if you're new to him, is... Maybe you want to start with the defensive items first because one thing I've learned watching Lee Sin players and playing as Lee Sin is if you're not as comfortable with him, defensive tanky Lee Sin works well for those characters or those champions. And as you become more comfortable with him and you start to get his kit down and you understand um, his killing potential, that's when you can start to convert over to full AD carry Lee Sin. So that's just the aspects of it so uh i kind of do a middle build because it works really well for durability and it works really well for just killing people so this game actually is going to end right here um because well 
look at how well that game was going for us and they were getting murdered so we're gonna go ahead and switch over to another Lee Sin game um, right now this game's just a little bit longer except for it was really boring at the beginning because I just outlaned um, my uh, Riven top and didn't really get to do anything and I just have a bunch of assists so um, we're gonna jump into this game here's another thing you can do with Lee Sin if you see a champion out like that where that Lysandra is and she's getting low what you can do is you can just throw your Q through a wall then jump to her move in and just kick her in the face and then kill her that way so um, you can move in on champions fairly easily and it's kind of fun to do it that way. Um, this game, we're coming in at about the same point of where the last build was. We have our next item, which is one of that first tanky items, which is Randuin's Omen. A good item, gonna give you the health and the armor. Very, very helpful. We also then do have a pickaxe, which can go towards two of our next items. Just depends on um, what you wanna go for, but we'll get to that in just a bit when we go back and buy it. And uh, like I was saying, so if you want, if you know what you're doing with Lee Sin, Go for the damage items first if you're comfortable and you're doing well in your lane. But if you're not, go ahead and pick up the defensive side, get the Hex Drinker, and then pick up this Omen, and that will start to help you out a little bit more because you have some health, you have some armor, and that magic resist, and that will really, really help you a lot more than that straight off um, Hydra first because if you get a Hydra first and you're just getting destroyed and you're behind, it's not going to be a helpful item in your lane. It is a good pushing item too, which Lee Sin can push quite well as uh, since he's decently mobile with his abilities. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just poke around their jungle. We're going to talk about his uh, runes next. As for those, what I usually do is um, either attack damage or uh, armor penetration marks. We go with armor seals, magic resist per level glyphs, and then there's a few different choices you can do for your quintessences. You can do movement speed, you can do life steal or attack damage. All of those are good choices just depending on where you're playing them. I'd go with the movement speed ones if you are playing them in the jungle for better ganks and a little bit more move speed. I think I took life steal ones to top lane and with the Doran's blade early and your W's ability to give you life steal when you reactivate it for the second time. It's a really good way to sustain yourself in lane over and over. So uh, um, give that a try. It works out really well. Here, I actually am going to run kind of into their team as they start to come together. Ramus is here, and so is Hoyt, who's currently legendary on our team because we've been protecting him as our AD carry. And um, we're going to get into a fight. There's a kick, and as you can see, when you use your kick with Lee Sin, if it does hit other champions, it does knock them up as well. So it does um, some great damage to the team, and it's a great way to either separate the team from you or a good way to actually, you know, use crowd control to hurt the whole team. So that's just something you have to pay attention to. Last time we were back at base, we did take um, that Hex Drinker and build that into a Maw of Malmortius, which is that item we we're talking about. Now, at this point, we picked up another Longsword, which we would team up with another... Um, pickaxe, and that would be building towards a last whisper, which is another great item for that armor penetration, even more damage, which does scale really well with his ultimate. So, um, we're gonna end this game as well. That's pretty much a build for Lee Sin. Everything you need to know actually is in the description along with the masteries, which I didn't really need to cover, but you can see all those on my Facebook page here. We're gonna jump in just murder vein because we're supposed to. And that is gonna be yeah, GG. If you have any questions, you can put those in the comments below. But other than that, I'll just see all of you guys in the next build video. Basically, the combination I try to use is hit him with my binding, which is my Q, which I will. Throw out that E to detonate that, and then use your ultimate while he is stuck in place, such as this, and blow him up like that.